I'd like to invite you to come on a journey with me back through time to the year 1724. The day, the 2nd of September. The place, Grass Market, Edinburgh. I'd like you to walk in your imagination with me down Victoria Street, and there you see a heaving mass of people below, crowded, jostling the windows, at the doors, of trees, all trying to get the best view of what? Of an execution of a certain poor creature by the name of Maggie Dixon. Now Maggie's story starts one year earlier to this, when her husband leaves her, abandons her. She's destitute, she's distraught, and she's penniless. And necessity forces her to leave Edinburgh and to move south to a town in the Scottish borders by the name of Kelso. There she earns an honest living at the inn. The innkeeper gives her board and lodgings in return for her working in the inn. Now as the year progresses, a certain, um, shall we say, amorous relationship develops between herself and the innkeeper's son. In the heat of young love, a pregnancy occurs and Maggie is very worried. What will people find out? What will they say? What will they do? She manages to conceal the pregnancy. That is, until the premature birth of her son. Sadly, her baby does not survive and Maggie is panicked. She has to get rid of the evidence. What will she do? She takes the body of her baby down to the local river, intending to cast it away, but finds herself unable to do so. The villagers find her evidence, her baby's body, and they trace the baby back to Maggie. Maggie finds herself being brought up in front of a court of justice, being tried under the act of the concealment of pregnancy. She is found guilty and she is sentenced to execution by hanging in the grass market on the 2nd of September 1724. And so thus we find ourselves coming back to that day when the crowd is heaving, the crowd is jostling, they're excited, they're waiting in anticipation for this sorry event. Maggie Dixon is brought to the grass market, brought to the gallows. And there, she meets her fate. Her body is taken down, it's placed in a coffin, and it's taken to her place of burial. However, along the way, the people escorting her coffin become a little bit unnerved. There are noises coming from the coffin. It starts quietly, with a knocking, scraping, and and then a voice, and it gets more loud. And the people find that they can't wait anymore. They must open the coffin and find out what's in there. This they do. And in sheer terror, they find Maggie, who is, um, shall we say, very much alive. They're shocked, they're confused, they're puzzled. What does this mean? This woman was dead, but now she's alive. Time ensues and discussion takes place. The law finds <coughs> that Maggie should stay alive. They take it as an act of God, and thus they give her the freedom to live, which she does so quite happily for a further 40 years. Now, if you come down to the grass market today, if you walk that same route down Victoria Street and you look on the left side of the grass market pedestrian area, there you'll see a pub with the name Maggie Dixon. Maybe she's ensuring that her story will be told for generations to come.